Hello and welcome back to the Educated Colin Snap channel. How you doing? So today we're going to be talking about Lady Deathstrike. It's just about to be revealed or released into the pool. And I do think it's an interesting enough card that I want to have some first impressions, some thoughts, some deck builds, that kind of thing. Let's get started. So Lady Deathstrike is a five energy, three power card with the on reveal destroy each card here with less power than this. So it's not going to destroy three power cards if you haven't buffed it at all. It's going to destroy two or less, which is somewhat limiting, of course, but it has the potential to be absolutely annoying, absolutely broken if you buff it a little bit or you have some other synergies to go along with it. It's a five power card, so it's not like the final play. You usually get to play it on five and then do stuff later. So it's an interesting tech card that can absolutely wreck some compositions, but you can also just make it a generically good card with a little bit of investment. Now it does require investment stuff like that. So it's not necessarily play in every deck, but it is a card that could see play and has some interesting things going for it. Now let's take a look at what the, the spotlight it's next to. So it's going to be next to mode, Doc and Stature. So those two cards are not super necessary. They're not like super, I guess, respectable of a spotlight to cast. They're both series four cards. So you could get both of them for 3000 tokens each. And Lady Deathstrike, I would say is not the most hyped card coming into this season. That would definitely be X23. And even Think Silver Samurai is also pretty good. So. Since there is only a specific number of spotlights that you can get per month, you do have to be selective. And I necessarily would not say that this is the best one to go for. So I do release a spotlight tier list every month. For this one, I would say if you're missing all three cards, the B tier spotlight, which isn't bad, but it, must, it means you have to want to play with Lady Dutch Strike. Like that is like your most hype card personally for yourself. Then I would say if you're missing all three as well, then with those two criteria, then I would say, yeah, you can go for it. If you're missing only one, if you're missing one of the other two, then I would say C tier, not really worth your investment. So you, at that point, maybe go for a different one. But if you are just missing all three of those cards and you really want to play a Lady Deathstrike, then I would say that is fine. So. Here, I do want to talk about some of the synergies of the card, some of the synergies that you might be looking into. First section is just synergies with the card itself that you can make it stronger or make it easier to trigger. So there's definitely going to be a lot of buffing going on. So Forge, Okoye, Nakia, Shuri, those type of cards can just buff up the lead district itself and make it have a more easier base power. Because as you increase its base power, then the payoff's going to be a little bit more effective. Mr. Negative cause it kind of does it as well, where you flip the power. So now it's a three energy five power card that also will give it a pretty nice boost in the game. Same thing is, a, it's a little bit different, but it has the same idea, absorbing man. So you play uh, Death Strike, and then you follow it up with absorbing man. Absorbing man did get a buff recently. Now it has a five power base. That's going to be very helpful to trigger the Lady Death Strike, and I can definitely see that being a very common combo where you play Death Strike on three or Death Strike on five, and then Absorbing Man on six to kind of be a victory. Now, if you're going to be buffing up the Death Strike and that being your game plan, well, then Armanzola has a really nice effect of being able to just move your Death Strike to the other lanes and be a really annoying tool there and, and have the effect trigger the whole board state. So that's something you can definitely do if you feel that's the idea you want to play with. And then the alternative of increasing your power is to reduce your opponent's power. So I think two cards do that really well. Hazmat and Scorpion both have negative proc triggers. I should have also put high evolutionary in here as well, because that also has the same effect. A high evolutionary wasp, a high evolutionary the thing 
can also reduce your opponent's powers. So that's another synergistic deck idea that I do have in the deck builds, but not in this particular list where you can just reduce your power instead of increasing yours to have the same similar effect. And Dakin, same thing. The Muramasa Shard, I don't even know that that's pronounced correctly. Muramasa Shard, just if you destroy that, it doubles. So that's another easy way of getting some value there. And then death, if you're going to be destroying a lot of things, that is a nice card to add into your deck. So those are some of the ideas from uh, buffing from uh, your game, destroying your opponent's cards perspective. Next up, we have a destroy your own cards perspective and just some of the synergies you can do with that. So obviously destroy decks have a lot of destroy synergies. So you have the, the hood, death pool, Bucky Barnes, even angel. If that's the kind of deck you want to play, most people don't really run angel. It's just too inconsistent if you get in your hand, but it is something you can play if you do want to do that. And then we have some of the like things you can destroy that make sense. Electro, destroying the Electro a lot of times is not a card you really want on your board because you don't want to be limited to that one card per turn. Mindset, and then Sentry as well, that minus 10 could be a very easy thing to destroy, as well as Sentry having this high base power. Something you've got to keep in mind with Lady Death Strike, if you are going to buff it, is that, and, and follow it up with Azola, is that all your cards have to be bigger than the death strike if you want it to live well sentry is a very easy card to make bigger than your death strike so that it stays alive if you go death strike into zola now valkyrie is a pretty cool tech you can do if you val if you buff the death strike any any amount right one power you play okoye or nikki or something like that and then you go valkyrie on five well you can death strike and blow up their whole board on six since all of their cards will have three power so that's something you can do it's a pretty big investment so it's probably not going to be a super meta but it is a cool tech if you want to mess with someone's deck that's like full relying on one lane or something like that and then the goblins just are going to be a very easy answer if you play death strike all the goblins have negative power so if they're playing goblins into you you can just death strike them away and that could be a pretty annoying thing to do and armor is just there it's probably supposed to be the next section. This is more of some of the things that Death Strike is really good into, and then just some counter tools. Armor, of course, and Cosmo. Those two counter everything, honestly. Armor and Cosmo counter everything in the game. If that's what it feels like, it's not true, but it feels every time I'm talking about, oh, what what counters a card? It's Armor, Cosmo, Shang Chi, or Enchantress. It's one of those those four. Yeah, they're always there, but yeah, Armor Cosmo does really well here. And then we just have a ton of low cost cards that make a lot of good sense to target with Death Strike. So things like Patriot, things like Brood. I think Dracula is a really good target. Same thing with Iron Man. Those are really good targets to just mess people up. Brood could be really good. A lot of people are playing Silver Surfer right now, so Brood is a pretty nice target. And if, if you're playing against a discard, Morbius, a lot of times they will have very low power until they play their Modoc. So you can just remove that from the game. And then Lockjaw, I also think, is a really nice answer or a really nice card to answer. If they play Lockjaw into you, then you could Lady Death Strike it away. That could really be a boon or a loss to their game plan. And then Cerebro, if you're against Cerebro decks, well, um, you know, you probably don't need Death Strike, but it's something you can do if you want to do that as well. And then I do have some deck ideas from this. I do think as I was looking through decks and, and, and deciding what to, what to build, there was actually a lot of like interesting looking decks that looked fun to me. So I could definitely see the appeal of like trying it out. I just don't know if they're going to be super consistent, super meta. First one I do have is just a buff deck. So you're trying to go Okoye, Nakia, and then Lady Death Strike Absorbing Mad. It's pretty low curve, so there's no like Zola here, but it's a nice little buff deck angle. Um, a lot of times if you're if you're trying to do the Death Strike Zola combo, the issue with that is that you're not going to be able to 
play that many cards because a lot of your cards will die if if you zola it right like so you know your zabu your koi as all those cards will just die so you have to be very careful but this one is just more good good cards and then you have some buffs to make the death strike huge and then if you don't do that you can just go death strike into absorbing man and still be fine and you have the zabu so you can go double three three costs which is super fine so it's just a nice powerful deck i think makes a lot of sense next up we have is negative surfer negative surfer negative so uh death strike here just think negative makes a lot of sense with this type of deck a three five kill your whole kill your enemies cards is just very strong so you know if you want to play negative you like that kind of deck style this just makes sense and you can combo it with Zol with Shuri as well. You can combo it with Wong Shuri if I mean that's you know at that point you're going. I think you're going a bit much, but you could definitely do it. Like literally, literally you can go Wong Shuri Death Strike Zola as your final turn, and that would actually work. You could play all of the cards, which yeah yeah yeah. yeah. A little much, but it's definitely something you can do if you think um, that's the idea you want to go for. So, pretty cool negative deck. Next up, this one is more of a Zola esque ramp build where you just go Okoye into Nakia, into Shuri, into Deathstrike, into Zola. Like, that's one way of playing out the game. Or if you don't get that combo, you can go Electro into death strike into whatever you want right and you know absorbing or whatever like you can go from there right or you can go electro into panther into zola which is a common combo or you can go electro into dr doom into absorbing man which is just something that it opens up right you instead of playing odin you get basically absorbing man which has kind of the same effect so just a lot of flexible flexibility in uh electro ramp build with this particular engine so i thought it was pretty cool next up now we're we're diving deep we're going to a high evolutionary build so here you're running high evolutionary since it has the ability to reduce power well that's going to make it very very easy for death strike to proc in cards you want to destroy so you reduce you know a four or five power card and then the death strike finishes it off and you just have a lot of synergies with reducing power and we all know that the high evolutionary base is pretty strong so you just get a pretty strong base but you get comboed with the death strike removal aspect of it so that's the idea here and i believe the final deck that i you know looked through here was just a destroy death strike build so you're, it's a pretty simple destroy build however it is running thanos and you are running the Daken. So you do get that advantage as well. But overall, the, the shell is just a lot of big destroy bases. And Death Strike just kind of fits in the base. This, this type of deck will be a lot better once X23 comes out. So I wouldn't necessarily say it's the it, this is the best shell for it. Because I think once X23 runs out, you could run this deck and X23. And it's going to feel a lot better. So, But it's still, it still works. If you want to play this idea and you just like Thanos destroy a lot of people like that anyway. So just something you can do if you want. But those are, I believe, the decks we have for Lady Deathstrike. Overall, I do think the Spotlight isn't necessarily that powerful. However, we've definitely been wrong before, especially with like Legion and stuff like that. Sometimes cards are just way better or there's a lot of synergies that make it flexible or powerful and we're not going to have x23 for the first week of it so maybe once x23 comes out it changes the evaluations but overall my personal opinion i would hold off on getting this spotlight and really wait and see um, how it performs especially with x23 before you really focus on getting this card but other than that hope you guys enjoyed this first impressions of lady death strikes coming out soon hope you guys enjoyed and i'll see you in the next one you get a car and snap. once you watch him you won't go back he'll teach you tomorrow snap your skills will be improved